right, so this is what comes in the box. This is the XI series rods. And uh, this is their full kit. Okay, this is the rod. Got a nice, beautiful green, like hunter green finish to it. Hey, so now that I got my rod in the mail, I'm going to start trying to build this rod. Um, I've never done this before. All I'm doing is just going off the instructions that was given to me uh, by the hook and the hackle. So when you go on their website, and you just can go into rod building uh, instructions, and it'll explain what to do. So the first step, it tells me um, I'm going to want to um, mark the spine of the, of the rod. Uh, so what I'm told to do is I'm told to put it, they say put on your boot. Um, uh, but I think all they want me to do um, is to put it on a hard surface, and then you can kind of rotate and feel where it snaps into place. But I don't know if you can see that it's, I've got it on a hard, smooth surface. That's the table here. You can, you can kind of see it snap into place. And it's already there. That's the spine. So it kind of wants to... You'll feel it when you start rotating it. it it's almost like it's, uh, you know, it's got a, it's got a spot that, you know, snaps in place. So um, when you do that, you're going to want to measure it. So, uh, right. So once we find where that snaps into place, we're going to want to mark it. Okay. So there it is. Uh, so I want to mark where the spine is. And actually, from what I read, the spine is on the back side. We're actually not even marking where the spine is, we're marking where the belly is. There. And there. So now I know roughly where the spine is. You're going to want to do that for each section. This is a four piece rod. Um, they say this is a little easier to do with the, the two. But um, there we go, I kind of felt it there. It's... Alright, so now that I have my uh, uh, backbone found. Uh, we didn't actually find the backbone for the base. Um, this is the, the end piece. This is uh, a pretty stiff and so it's real tough to find the find it. Um, and I hear that you know it's possible to kind of break it if you're really pushing on it um, just because it is you know it's a hollow wall for graphite. So um, here it doesn't really matter because this doesn't flex much anyway. Um, so, once you do that, once you find your backbone for the other pieces, um, we're going to go ahead and attach the, um, the handle. Um, so, the bottom part of the handle fits on real easy. It just kind of fits right over. Uh, but the cork, the cork does not. Um, I've actually done a little bit of reaming on this already. But it's pretty tight, which is good. You want it tight, but um, that's about as far as I can get it get it down. And you're gonna want this. Uh, I place a little mark. So when you put that on, you want to place a little mark to see where that basically ends up. And then when you do that, because this is gonna fit right over top, like that. So you want to mark basically where, where this cork is going to end up. So you want to ream this down to fit on there. So I've done a little bit already. It didn't fit whatsoever. And I just, I'm just i using a drill bit. So the drill bit obviously doesn't go all the way down. So you've got to use two different drill bits, which is kind of good because then you've got the taper. Because the rod tapers, you can use a bigger drill bit on this side, smaller on this side. So. Also, you're going to want to try to drill out the walls of it differently so you can kind of angle it like this to give it even more taper. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little more. There we go. You obviously want to make this as straight as possible. You want to add more than you think you'll need because you can always take some off. At least, that's what I think. That should hopefully do the trick. So let's see. Yep, see? 
doesn't fit on there. So let's take some off. Let's do one whole turn. There we go. Boom. You know what? I took off that measurement. One more. I want to see where to put the last bit of tape. Look at that. That's a tight finish. All right. So let's put everything together. See if it fits. There we go. Okay. For this next step, you're gonna need the Rod Dancer Ultimate Gel 15 minute epoxy of it. I want to get as much epoxy on this as possible. We'll always wipe more off and that's why I've got a wet and dry paper towel. Um, don't know if I'll really need that. Um, I'll just get everything out and ready for you because you do not want to miss um, a step when you do this. So I've got everything I need here. Make sure everything's measured out before you start. Uh, this stuff is uh, Quite thick, huh? This is technically for one rod, so let's go ahead and mix up the whole thing. Use up all the epoxy that we can. These two epoxies, when they get together, that's how epoxy works. These types of uh, epoxies, you, they uh, there's a reactor, there's like a catalyst that um, will harden the other one. So. Since we know where we're going with the top part, you can always wipe some off, but you know, why why get this all over your beautiful rod if you don't need to? So you only want to try to get it in the parts that that um, you are trying to cover. So you want all this on the blank, try to cover every inch of the blank. Hopefully I'm doing this right. Okay. Try not to get it on your hardware. In reality, you know, I probably should have uh, taped this. So. Yep. And I was right. I was very, very very right. All right. Well, that's uh, that's why we have paper towels, right? Shoot, and it went up under where the rod seat's gonna have to be. So that's not good. I got to clear that out. That's probably why it came with two picks. There we go. Look at that. So now that's on there. You're gonna want to let this sit for. Before you do anything else, you want this to sit for a good uh, 24 hours. Um, you are done a step. You've got your handle on, and it's starting to really look like a fly rod. Um, you know, this is this is really not as difficult as as, uh, as I thought it would be. A um, little mess up there with uh, with the epoxy. Probably should have had a little more ready um, and taped up better, but. Uh, Reality for the first one, I mean, this still is not going to look bad at all. I think this is going to come out looking really, really, really good. So after I did the video, I did a little research and realized that um, when I bore this out, when I reamed this out, it uh, I used a, a drill bit. And it's uh, because what I had, I didn't have a, a file for it. But then I started uh, reading a little bit into it, because it did take a while for me to actually ream that out with the drill bit. And I found some people said to use a, uh, a rat tail file. So a rat tail file is this thing. And it's just basically a long file that has a bit of a taper already to it. So it actually ends up working out perfectly. Anyway, so I already started reaming it a bit um, for the camera. And unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the footage. So. But I got it to about that point, um, And, uh, th you know, um, 
just to show you what it was, but I'm going to do it again here. So I've got, got it reamed to here, and that's about all that it's going to go in. But I don't want you to see how quick it is to, to ream this. And you want to go just all the way through. leave a bit of a mess. So if you're lucky like me and have a great wife that doesn't mind a little bit of sawdust, um, <laughs> then good for you. Otherwise put a tarp down if you're going to do this or do it in the garage or something. But you can see how how quick that was. I and mean, that's already down. Um, maybe a one more ream or two um, and it would be right on. That's it. It's a lot quicker. Get it yourself a rat tail file. They're, I think, like five bucks. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and add our eyelets. And I've got a little checklist here. You can go on their website and they have this checklist of, um, or this guide, I guess, this graph of how to lay this out. It's got multiple size guides, so let's go ahead and lay those out. That one's larger than this one. That one is the same size. Okay. So that's how they're going to be laid out. All right, so on it, it says to add on the tip top first because that's going to, so you can see here, the end of the, the rod, the graphite, comes to here. So that adds another, I mean, it, it really, you know, I, I, I talked to the, the guy uh, that, that um, you know, I was asking the question about this because I started doing this and I wasn't quite sure. And he said, you know, in reality, it doesn't really matter that, that quarter of an inch. It's, it's not, not that important. So, you know, I mean, but he does recommend to add it on there. So we're going to go from the tip top, four and a half inches. Okay. So four and a half inches right here. So that's going to be where our next guide is. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. So we want to rotate around and roughly lay it out to where it's right where your mark is for the spine, as close as you can. And you just want to tape one side on because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to want to wrap right up the eyelet. So you want to wrap, you know, this way. And then once that's wrapped, then you can pull the um, wrap your thread. Um, then you can pull off the, the the tape and then wrap the other side in. So I'm going to put that back on. And you know what, we're going to do this. So four and a half, so the next one is nine and a half. This is four and a half, so really we need to be five inches from that. Right on five, there we go. All right, I'm going to grab the next eyelet. And roughly try to make it in line with the previous one. I'm going to wrap these on fairly tight. That way they stay on. Now that we're to the ferrule, let's go ahead and attach this on because if you just put it on measure to here, you know, you, this this moves up into the, the rod, the butt. So seven and a quarter. Okay. Pretty close to the ferrule, but I think that will be okay. Yeah, that's just close, but it's not right on it. So that leaves enough room to do a wrap and then do a, you know, and that that's okay. So that'll. Okay, so this is my little makeshift uh, rod building station here. So based on what it says on the the website, it says to cut some notches in a in a box so that way it can spin. You can see that it's it's able to spin pretty easily. Okay. It says to put your pretty cool ingenious idea actually, put the spool in a cup and then run the thread into the book and you can adjust the I guess the pressure by either putting books on top or just putting it down further in the in the, the paper. 
and that'll adjust how much how fast this is coming out the other end. Okay, now I'm ready to apply the epoxy. They said to put some tin foil down. I guess it keeps uh, somehow it from hardening as fast um, while it's on the tin foil, so it gives you a little more time to apply it. Um, but I'm just going to use the box here, I think, that I was using to uh, wrap the guides. Okay, so this is the finished rod. Um, I mean, really, if we're not doing this before, I thought it would be a lot more difficult. But it really turned out pretty simple. Um, you know, it's it's not perfect, but um, really, really not bad at all. You can see that came out really nice. Um, <clears throat> there are a few spots, so a couple things I would recommend is 
really be careful when you're adding the epoxy. You can see that's not perfect there. Um, probably should have done a, another coat um, for that one. And I, I might. I might still do that. I have some epoxy left. Uh, but most of these turned out good. Um, a couple of them have... You can see where I didn't trim uh, the thread properly. So that's one thing I will say, don't use scissors like I did. Um, use a, a, uh, um, <clears throat> a razor blade to really cut it off right at the, the edge and it'll be, it'll come out looking a little nicer. But overall, I mean, for, for not doing this before and not having exactly the right tools, I mean, this came out looking as good as uh, most any rod you could really get besides a couple little little problems. So. Um, but those are easily overcome with the right tools and the right know-how. And my next rod will come out looking, I think, perfect. Um, I know know what to do now. And uh, so, you know, as you can see, I don't really know anything about how to do this. This is my first rod. But it still came out looking really, really nice. I mean, it's a, it's a really nice fly rod. It's kind of hard to show the action on it, but um, this blank specifically is kind of moderate. Um, I thought it would come out little stiffer but when you add the components on it it does give a little weight to more of the tip so it does you know bend a little more um, so this is a moderate moderate to, to fast action I would say uh, blank it's not super fast um, which is good I mean this is gonna be a really really good rod I think um, for just you know everyday workhorse type of rod and since one I built it would be really nice to use this every every type of you know every fishing expedition so <clears throat> I am quite proud of it I I really do like it and I think when you guys build yours you're, you're gonna love it too it's just uh, you know it came out looking great and you know the process of doing it is just it's well worth it so go ahead and give it a try guys if you have any questions the hook and the hackle where I got this they were really really helpful um, I emailed the guy um, you can also call him and he gives the phone number um, you know and they're they're really helpful um, If they don't answer right away they always call back and they were able to answer every call that I um, every question I had uh, whether it was uh, via call or email um, and uh, really helped me through it. So it did take me, you know, a couple days to get this done, but only because I had, you know, a couple extra questions. Um, <laughs> but I think most of those questions that I had, most of those problems that I found, um, probably uh, I think I answered in the video. So most of them, unless you have some new ones, should have already been answered if you've watched this video. So, like I said, give it a try. I think you guys will like it.